Welcome back to the Everyday Workbench. Today we are talking about creating a scope of work for your next construction project and why it's so important to have a good detailed scope of work when starting a project and when hiring a contractor to do the work or even if you're doing it yourself it's important to have that list of things that need to be done. Quite frankly, it's probably the most important component when starting a construction project. If you find value in what we're talking about today, go ahead and subscribe and looking forward to continuing the conversation about construction uh, as we go along. Now today we are talking about creating a scope of work for a construction project. Now in reality, there's a lot of important things that go into starting a construction project. You really need to have your thoughts on paper as far as what needs to be done in order to have a successful project. From start to finish, it's kind of a roadmap of what needs to be done. Um, not every project will have an architect involved. Not every project will have an engineer involved. So for those smaller remodeling projects, the scope of work is going to be your roadmap from starting construction to finishing construction successfully, efficiently, on budget, on time. The homeowner or property owner is responsible for the first steps in creating a scope of work. You know, quite simply, um, it can be as simple as starting out by saying, I'd like to remodel a bathroom, okay? Now, the questions that come up is how extensive is this remodel, okay? Is it just a refresh where we're replacing a toilet and replacing a vanity and replacing a mirror and a couple of light fixtures? Is it just refreshing what we have? Or is it a full-scale bathroom remodel where we are gutting the room, taking the walls down, taking the ceiling down, perhaps moving some of those plumbing fixtures? And so you really got to decide what you're doing. And as you're doing that, you are creating the scope of work. You're just creating a list of work that needs to be done. Now, as you move along, depending on how intense the project is, um, if it's more complex, you may have an architect involved, you may have an engineer involved, and you might even have a contractor involved in helping you create the scope of work. Because sometimes you're going to need professional opinions on what can be done or what can't be done, or in some cases, in order to accomplish one thing in the bathroom, you may have to do several steps before that to get the desired finish and the desired conditions of what you want. When you get to the point of the project where you're trying to choose a contractor, you're going to need a good detailed scope of work so they can successfully bid on the project. So if you have several contractors coming through and if you don't have a scope of work, you're going to get three different bids from three different contractors with three different points of view on the project. Now, if you have a good detailed scope of work created, you're gonna give that to the contractor when they're coming through to look at the project and they will base their bid off of that scope of work. So the goal would be to have an apples to apples to apples bids when you're going to choose your contractor. You're gonna have three contractors that are providing bids based off of one detailed scope of work. If you go out to bid without a scope of work, you're not gonna get apples to apples to apples bids. You're gonna get apples to oranges to bananas bids because you're gonna have people just putting what they think should be done on paper and submitting that bid. Communication is a huge factor when it comes to construction. You've got a lot of players involved. You have a property owner or a homeowner um, sometimes you have an architect, sometimes you have an engineer, of course you have a contractor, you may have a separate plumber, a separate electrician, sometimes there's an HOA involved. There's a lot of players involved with most construction projects, so communication is key. And if you have that detailed scope of work, that's a great piece of communication because everybody that's involved with the project knows what's going on. It's kind of like having a roadmap where everybody knows the details and the process of what's happening in that specific project. A very frustrating thing that can happen is in the middle of a project, a contractor comes back and says, oh, I didn't know we were doing this, or I wasn't aware that we're putting in a new toilet, or I wasn't aware that we are doing a porcelain tile on the floor, 
Well, that's because there was no communication. And if you have a good quality scope of work, that's a really great step in the right direction to having good communication to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Now, a question that comes up regarding the scope of work is who creates the scope of work? Well, uh, very simply, the homeowner or the property owner starts the scope of work. They are the person that's in charge of the project. They're, they're the person that's in charge of knowing what they want to do in their home or on their property. So once you have that initial scope of work completed, it's important for that homeowner to go out to the architect and have a discussion, go out, you know, talk to a contractor and say, hey, is this scope of work, what am I missing here? What components do we need to add into this scope of work so we're all on the same page? So ideally, the homeowner has the first and final say in creating the scope of work. When it comes to what format to use when creating a scope of work, we've seen all types in the industry. Through the years, I've seen uh, people scribble notes on a piece of cardboard. Uh, we've seen people uh, use technology and have a Google Drive link that is shared with everybody. Uh, there's tons of different uh, construction software out there which will have uh, a link or a place for a scope of work. It really doesn't matter what format that you use, you just have to make sure that everybody involved with the project has access to the scope of work. Think of the scope of work as a live document. You are gonna create your first draft of a scope of work way before hammers are ever swung on a job site. But remember that, you know, just because you complete that scope of work before construction starts, it doesn't mean that, that it's not gonna change. There are gonna be issues that happen in construction that will affect the scope of work. So that is a live document that will change throughout the project. And you gotta make sure, you know, once again, that the players involved with the project all have access to those updates and understand that the scope of work has changed. When you have a good quality scope of work, that's gonna make sure that everybody involved with the project is on the same page. And when everybody's on the same page, work gets done more efficiently, it's on time and on budget. You're going to avoid complications and disagreements on the job site. If everybody has that scope of work in hand and understands what needs to be done to complete the project, you're not gonna have arguments on the job site and finger pointing on the job site. You wanna make sure everybody's on the same page and you wanna make sure everybody's acting in a professional manner. So having a scope of work, a detailed document that can be shared with everybody that is involved with the project is key to making sure that everybody stays on the same page. Thanks for watching this video. If you have a question about a scope of work, leave that in the comments. If you have a question about construction in general, leave that in the comments as well. And please subscribe to our channel if you found this information and this video helpful. We've got tons of great content on our channel and we're always adding uh, different videos. So please subscribe and we'd love to have you in the community. And as always, thank you for watching The Everyday Workbench.